Okay, so yeah, that's just a little fun. Have you guys heard that song before? It's called Dry Bones or Dem Bones. Well, you know, that's what we're talking about. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed that we can get through this. Um, the last bones that we're studying now in the human skeleton, um, and you can see it's the pelvic girdle and the lower limb bones. But um, before I, I go any farther, just a quick review over here. Um, I'm going to move. There we go. You guys can see that. Just a reminder about how important it is to know um, these terms. I corrected the lab test on the bone markings of the upper limb and uh, pectoral girdle. Um, again, you need to know about the fossa. And how is a fossa related to a process? And what's the difference between, oh, let's see, when we're talking about um, the spine or a tuberosity. Uh, today, when we talk about the lower limbs, we're going to talk about the trochanter. But again, um, facet, there would be another one or the relationship between epicondyle and condyle. Uh, it's really important and it'll make your learning easier if you have a handle on those terms. So that's just a reminder about that. Now back to our notes on the pelvic girdle. Um, again, in your notes, in the outline that you have, uh, you have the updated version for our Merib text. Uh, these refer to the textbook by Wingert. So we are actually in chapter 5, um, ninth edition of Merriam's anatomy text. So we start with the pelvic girdle. The fact that it's made of two large coxal bones, also called hip bones. Uh, we've looked at these on the skeleton. You know that they unite in front uh, and also posteriorly with the sacrum. And that whole ring is called a pelvis. The pelvic inlet is a large superior opening. So again, superior, knowing what that term means in uh, relation to inferior. And uh, we'll have this discussion about the differences between male and female pelvises, and we'll uh, take a look at our, our classroom skeleton and decide, is it a male or a female, just by looking at the pelvis. So your pelvis provides support for the upper parts of your body, for attachment to your lower limbs, for protection of those organs found in your lower trunk, and of course it's the birth canal in females. I've, oh, whew, we're back. I never know. Some days. Here we go. Pelvis. Uh, let me go to that. Still got the picture. Now on your handout you do have a copy of that picture. Take a look at the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Um, on the screen, you can see the different colors um, to represent where they stop and start. Also, you can see in the picture the obturator foramen, which we talked about uh, when we were studying the um, axial skeleton, because we talked about the foramen, um, magnum foramen, uh, in the skull. So you can see, again, we've got terms like spine, um, foramen, anterior and superior, and so on. So we'll continue on and talk about the bones that uh, make up your coxal bones. So there, let's see if we can get that picture showing. So the, the coxal bones are actually three fused bones, the ilium, the pubis, and the ischium. And you can see um, where they're located, superiorly, inferiorly, and then anterior and posterior. Uh, where they are fused, you see a, a, this cup-shaped depression. And again, take a look at that picture. Um, I pronounce it as a tabulum, but it's the actual socket where your femur, the head of your femur, is going to be found. All right, so now let's take a look at those three bones that make up your coxal bone. Um, the largest one would be the ilium, as you can see. Um, and then the ischium, 
and then the pubis towards the, um, the anterior side. The bony ridge of your hip, you can take a look and feel that. Uh, that's part of your ilium. That's the iliac crest. Um, sacroiliac joint. Again, the, the name of our joints actually talk about the two bones that comprise them. So the sacrum and the ilium. That's where that joint is. So you can locate that uh, when we take a look at the skeleton also. And now look at this terminology. Anterior, superior, iliac spine. Um, again, just knowing what those terms mean, you should be able to um, find it, locate it, and, and also be able to identify it. The ischium has three major features, as you can see. A spine, tuberosity, and then the ramus. And that's that flattened region that is going to fuse then with the pubis anteriorly. And then the pubis is called the symphysis pubis. That's the name of the joint where both coxal bones unite. The pubic arch. And then, um, again, we've talked about that large opening, the obturator foramen. All right, there's your coxal bones. So I'm going to scoot back up here just for a minute, drive you crazy, I know. But those are, uh, those are the coxal bones. Those are, that's your pelvic girdle. So that makes up the pelvis when you throw the um, sacrament to the back. All right, lower limbs. The bones of your leg, they support your thigh, leg, ankle, and foot. So we start with the femur, the patella or kneecap, your tibia and fibula, then tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges all the way down. The femur is the longest and heaviest bone in your body. Um, we'll take those out and you'll do the same type of lab where you're going to identify all these different markings. Uh, let's see, while I've got this up, let me see if I get lucky and click over here. Oh, not really. How about this one? Yeah. There you go. There's your femur. Four different views of it. And those are the different uh, markings that we're going to talk about. And again, just like with the humerus, you can almost think of them as, uh, I don't want to call them sister bones, I guess, but just like the humerus goes into the radius and ulna, so our femur goes into or articulates with, excuse me, the tibia and fibula. And so you can see um, how we've got condyles again on the end that are going to articulate. The head of the femur goes into that acetabulum socket, just like our um, head of the humerus went into the glenoid fossa. So you've got that to take a look at. Let's move that out. So there you have it. Um, Ball-shaped head at the proximal end. Neck is a constricted area. Uh, and then if you saw in that picture, those trochanters, large, large um, processes uh, coming off of um, the proximal end of your femur. Condyles, very similar again, like I said, to the humerus. Lateral and medial, so that helps you know their location. They're found at the distal end of the femur. And then you're going to see a slight depression where your kneecap or patella fits. And it's located there within this large tendon that wraps it over the front of the knee. Um, and we're not going into ACLs and MCLs in, in this chapter, but we will talk about those probably when we get to the muscles. Okay, so there's your femur. Now as we keep moving down the femur, we've got the tibia. Now your tibia, now well, let's see. Here we go. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Oh boy, I really did. Okay, so there you've got the tibia and the fibula. So notice how much larger the tibia is than the fibula. And we're going to take a look. Um, as you can tell, if it's called the medial malleolus versus the lateral malleolus, which one is going to be found on the inner leg, the tibia or the fibula? Again, knowing those terms is going to help a lot. All right, so there it is. Tibia is on the medial side of your foreleg between the knee and ankle. It's the larger of the two foreleg bones. Condyles, again, are going to... Um, 
be on the proximal end, notice they articulate with the condyles of the femur. So again, getting your terminology is going to help so much with um, identifying these features on the bones in the lab. Tibial tuberosity, attachment for the patellar ligament, and then the medial malleolus on the distal end, and, and that actually is your ankle bone on the inside. Uh, inferior surface articulates with a large bone, forms your ankle joint. So again, we're in chapter five. Uh, you can locate these structures as you are doing um, doing the notes. It would be in pages 162 to 166. So to the lateral side of the tibia is your fibula. Uh, not as big. Uh, and, and you'll notice that as we look at them in the lab also. Um, the lateral side of your ankle, the bump on the outside, is your lateral malleolus. And it's that uh, distal end of your fibula, and it articulates with the talus of the foot. So that's when we get into your um, tarsals, then the metatarsals and the um, arch of your foot, and then your toes are called phalanges, just like your um, fingers we're called phalanges. So um, I'm going to quit talking and let you just go ahead and get the rest of these uh, bones, these names written down. We aren't going to, um, I'm not going to have you learn all the, the, the bones that are found in the ankle. There are seven of them. Uh, we're just going to focus on the, the most prominent ones, the talus and the calcaneus. Um, but uh, go ahead and finish up with your notes and then be prepared to look at these bones in the lab next week.